Good morning. Today I'm interviewing Kitty Hoffman, a retired professor from the chemistry department, and my name is Penny Gilmer. This is part of our history project of the Department of Chemistry and Biochemistry. Good morning, Kitty. Good morning, Penny. <laughs> I'm Hi. so glad you could be here today and that Norris could bring you. Well, thank you. Thank you very much. I feel as if I've known the chemistry department for a long time. Would you tell me, you know, like, I know you first came as a student. I first came as a student in the fall of 1932. Wow. And I had graduated from Winter Haven, Florida High School. I had taken all of the science they offered, except biology, the <laughs> real important one to me. And I look forward to continuing science, unless I found something more interesting. <laughs> so when you came here, you found chemistry interesting. Was that your first major? I had chemistry and physics in high school. My chemistry professor had come to Florida State College for Women, and um, I think that she inspired me to a great extent to be sure to get into the sciences right away. And that was not always uh, possible because the classes were small and one could not give a professor five or six different courses to teach. So um, I had to bide my time and stagger my curriculum each year carefully to work everything in. What were you teaching? What was I teaching? I wasn't really teaching. I was thinking of when a course would be given. It might not be given every year. Oh, I see. See what I mean? I do. So I had to be careful to get the prerequisites. And uh, it was the difference between having a lot of choices any time you wanted it and just waiting until it was available. I see, when, it was when the course that you needed was offered. Right. So you had to plan ahead. You had to plan ahead. So did you major in chemistry? Not exactly. Majoring in that day was um, taking all the courses that they gave when you wanted it. Yes. That's what I was talking about. Uh -huh. And I don't think I took chemistry until my sophomore year. Wow, yeah. And I gave, I took what was given, which was really only two courses, two semesters of freshman chemistry. And then there was analytical, the typical order. And, of course, organic. So uh, that stopped right there, usually, because there would not be enough students who took other courses than chemistry and chemistry to make use of what was given. I see. So you, you really need to set up your four years when you came. So what did you major in? I majored in science. Oh, I see. <laughs> I majored in biology. I think my yearbook said I was a biology major, but that was not true in my eye. But I did take uh, bacteriology yes. particularly. You and particularly like that? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, uh, it was not a big platter from which one to choose for left. But you got a, an excellent education? Yes. Yes? 
Did you get an excellent education? I thought I got a good education. Yeah. And there were women from other states who came here, which was flattering to take the science courses. And we had um, almost all PhD teachers. And Dr. Conradi had been careful when he could do so to select women PhDs to be the instructors. To be the what? The instructors. Oh, the instructors. The uh -huh. yes. And he got the um, best trained people or best selected people he could well, he did well. So, we thought we were fortunate. Yes. I know I went to Bryn Mawr College. Well, for, I went to Douglas College for my undergraduate degree, and it was all women. And uh, then I went to Bryn Mawr for a master's, and there were all women students. Although, at both places, there were, there were some male instructors, but also females. And that was important to me, too, to have females because then it was so unusual for women to major in a science, mm -hmm. especially chemistry. Yeah. And we didn't have been, except in the summer. In the summertime, men could take whatever course they would at the day, you know. Mm -hmm. So, whatever there was about the summer, we got a little taste of composition, so to speak. Uh huh. With me. Well, that was good. What? That was good. Yes, that yeah. was. Good. So you stayed here in the summer then. Pardon? Did you stay here in the summer? Only one summer that I said. So you went home. I went home. I know your father funded your tuition and room and board by selling FSU oranges, right. freight loads, truckloads of oranges. Right. And then I funded part of my education by working in the dining hall. Oh, so you could serve the oranges. Yeah. <laughs> and I was uh, turned to be a dining girl, mm -hmm. dining room girl. And still on campus, there are remnants of that title being a dining room girl because it meant that you served the food. You didn't have to wash dishes. That was good. And you did have to see that all seats at your table were filled so that food was not oh. wasted. Mm -hmm. And you did have to put the water glasses on big carts to move from to the kitchen so they could be washed. Very hard work. <laughs> yeah, well you didn't have to do that. You didn't no. have to do the washing. No. No, no, I didn't. We had about um, 1,600 students. At that point? At that point. Wow. And so it was like a very private High class girls school. Yes, we felt. It was. There were two other schools in the state where students went if they didn't make it here. And that was, oh, what did I say? That was uh, Southern College in Lakeland. Oh, yes. And um, the other one was Rollins. College in Winter Park. Yeah. So, so well, you got in yeah. and you graduated. Yeah. I know then you went to, Col at some point you went to Columbia and got a master's. Did you go there right away? Yes, I mm -hmm. did. Mm -hmm. uh, because I've been president of student body. Oh, yeah, that's right. And so I had quite a few little duties and places you went to meet others in a similar position. The um, thing that that brought about, of course, 
was a short, probably one semester that you led because you'd gotten in politics. Mm -hmm. And uh, I came in the summer to make up the fact that I'd shortened my senior year by one course. So I had to come and take it physics too. And I worked at what we called the Dutch kitchen, which was a very fine eating place downtown. Oh. Opposite the park from the Presbyterian Church. Oh yes. It's and the we just on Park Street, one of right. the Park Streets. We had the best food and to eat and uh, it was just a really nice job mm -hmm. to, to be taking visits. Well, um, while I was working there, I met a man. I was serving tables there. I elevated my responsibilities. I was serving tables at uh, the Dutch kitchen. And there was a man who came every day for two or three weeks. Mm -hmm. And he said, of course we visited because we became friends as we exchanged our conversation. Mm -hmm. And he said to me, what do you want to do? And I said, well, I'd like to go to graduate school right there. I had gotten a job at a little town on the west coast of Florida and teaching chemistry. And that did not appeal to me because I think there would have been two or three people and I wasn't ready for the basketball and the other things that you taught because you had an academic job to do. Yes. And um, so he said, um, well, let me think about this a little bit. He thought it, about it, and he said, well, what kind of a student are you? I said, a pretty good student. Mm -hmm. And uh, he said, well, bring me your credentials. Bring me your credentials. Yes. And I'll check those. So the registrar gave me a record. And he said, my wife and I give scholarships to Columbia. Oh. And we are, are you interested? And I say, oh, okay. <laughs> yes, I'm very interested. <laughs> so with no more, he, he went home to my home and met my parents oh. to be sure that that would be acceptable to them because I was 17 years old. And, uh, of course, my parents didn't know what to say. They but said no? Because uh, it was such a new idea to them. And they had thought that I was going to be teaching chemistry to high school on the west coast of Florida. I had an uncle who lived in New York City, but we never saw him. Gave my parents a little bit more confidence, you know, in the fact that... That there'd be a family member there. Yes, there was somebody there if I needed them. So, uh, um, off I went to Columbia. On no more assurance, security, trust. It is just trust. And sure enough, I got the money. I didn't have to worry about money. That was nice. I went, I got in Columbia. I, I was flight. I was two or three days flight. Classes had started. So I had to present my credentials to some the lay person who worked in the registrar's office at Columbia. So they were okay. 
and I was in Rome. From then on, I was I was a supported student. Wonderful. And it was just absolutely amazing. How many years were you there? Was it one or two? It was one year as a full, full student. Mm -hmm. And I think I took a course or two while I was working. Mm -hmm. Because I did work after a year, I mm -hmm. guess it was, a year and a half. And it, it was truly a real experience. I wasn't sure the medical people were trying to interest me into joining the medical class. And uh, I thought about that. I looked at Duke and I decided that I, that wasn't my interest. And I was really interested in the sort of principles and the fundamentals more than I was interested in a sore finger or a bad toe or something, mm -hmm. and not belittling as. Yes. So, I had two younger brothers, one six and one eight years younger than I, and I thought, well, here come these boys, you know, and they're going to need a little help to get through, get started in the university. All in all, I had uh, not forgotten my dearest person, also. really my sweetheart. Oh, yes. Harold? So he came up to see me, and uh, we decided that that was a time for a break for both of us, and so we got married. I moved to Gainesville. Well, uh, came World War Two, and Harold, who was really finishing his first year of graduate work at the University of Florida, and I wasn't taking anything but just courses that I wanted, like scientific German and things that were frosting. So. Yes. And um, the draft board, you know. We moved to Tallahassee because he got a job teaching chemistry and running a laboratory of chemistry, which the Department of Agriculture held so that they tested all their um, the samples that were fed to animals and other Looking and for feed. toxics, making sure that the feed was all right. For the, for the animals. Right. And then came the call to the whatever service you were going to join in December of... 45? 40, it was earlier than... Oh, 44? Yeah, earlier Four, than... Yeah. 43? <laughs> Go back to 42. Oh, 42. <laughs> And at that time, um, we were just getting established into Tallahassee, really. And I was asked whether I would come and teach some freshman laboratories. Here at Florida State? Here. Well, we, that was called the Florida College moved, for Women? Both moved to Tallahassee. Yeah. Of course, I had a um, career established, but not here necessarily. And I thought, how wonderful that is to be at some job. I, was, I went to work 
G.G. and Frenchman in the laboratory classes. And the first thing we knew, he was uh, going to be drafted. And so he selected the Navy. And uh, we started moving. He went up to Dartmouth and started at their courses that the Navy offered. And then you stick to Washington and Baltimore and then New Orleans and then California and then the South Pacific. So I followed him along until I couldn't go any further. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, I drove with one other woman across the continent back to Tallahassee. And I said, oh, goody, <laughs> <laughs> you're coming back. Mm -hmm. Start right tomorrow. What year was that? Um, I said, yeah, can't think that far back. Well, 45 was the year was the war 40, ended. 43. Okay. 43. And um, I did not see him for two years. Mm. Till 45. I got an occasional letter. The Navy was pretty good. My letters went, but of course his were carefully censored. Yes. And that was life. And it was, uh, people, the, the natives tried to make it as happy as possible, but it was a long, tedious uh, time for the wives who were left behind. And those who could knit, and I could knit, uh, roll bandages right up the top of a waistcoat. We have nests up there <laughs> <laughs> where we did things. And some people grew a garden to help the people left behind at home. Mm -hmm. Some women had to leave school to run the family business while their husband or their father or someone was gone. Mm -hmm. Because you, the service did not always consider what you left behind. Yeah, well. So women somewhere fell into the activity. And a lot of women went into service. I wanted to go in the Marines with my family we had people in the Navy and some in the Army and some in the Air Force. I was going to go in the Marines. To be different. My husband said, no. No, <laughs> no, no, no Marines. Look, let me ask you, I know we're talking uh, about this, but how about, well, how was the chemistry department when you first came? And, and how did it evolve through the years as long as, you know, you were in the department? I know you retired in 1984. Yes. Uh, we were, as I said, I had all those labs, and that involved being responsible for somebody who made up the solutions for you, you know. But we had uh, persons who continued in their position for the most part here because, first of all, we had women professors yes. much of the time. And I think there were maybe one or two of the young ones who joined this service. Uh-huh. So... Uh, so you were depleted in faculty then? You know, because some people had to leave? And we probably had some thin spots. Mm -hmm. But you all pulled together. Right. And we did not have this, um, what you said, we all pulled together. Mm -hmm. And got the job done. And I, I know that in some instances where there was, say, a senior student who was very good and very experienced, 
graded a lot of papers and that sort of thing. To help. Was just hired to help teach the lower courses, mm -hmm. working together. Yes. Even though it was not a formal factory. How, how many majors were there in those days? When you, you know, around the time you first came? Oh, I don't think there were more than three or four. Uh huh. So you knew them pretty well? Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, so it, originally when you first started, it was the Florida College for Women, right? The Florida State College for Women? Right. And then in 48 or 49, it changed to co ed with Florida and became Florida State University? 47. 47. 1947. And how did it change then? Oh, what a wheel of a difference. What a wheel of a difference, yes. The town was overcome with new ideas that were not always accepted. And of course, we had a race problem. I know. And uh, a lot of other places had a race problem. Um, He just didn't see uh, whites and blacks mixing as soon as you would have liked. But there were people of the faculty who had plenty of friends at Fayetteville and vice versa. But I think it was said that we could go to Fayetteville, but they didn't always feel at home coming over here. Mm -hmm. We cross, we, we worked that out over a period of time. It, it took a while. I know. It took a while. And um, it, was, it was just one, one of those things a lot of people never got over that, never reached above that. And after all, there was not a huge amount of exchange. And often it was done in some musical way. Use the arts. To, to bring people together. To express. Yes. Well, that's interesting. Mm -hmm. I think that helped. Whether we recognized it then or not, that the arts were pulling us together. Mm -hmm. Interesting. So, in 48 and 49, the men's faculty started coming? Is that right? There were men. What? There were men. Yeah. I'm not sure whether it was half and half. Mm-hmm. But close. In, in chemistry, it was not at first half and half, I'd say. I'd say we maybe had... Um, Two or three men, mm -hmm. and six or seven women. So, but through the years, it came more men and fewer women. Oh yes. Um, you would laugh at the administration that we had. The chairman's desk was on the landing between two floors. Really? Was, On the landing? <laughs> so you could see them going up and going down. And uh, <laughs> somehow or other we dripped on the dean of home economics desk. <laughs> and she sat directly below one of the sinks at the end of the lab. <laughs> so Dean Sandals, what we <laughs> didn't always have a nice clean dish because we unfortunately we were on the top floors <laughs> and the bottom floor. That would have we made had some sense. funny things here. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, the graduates were several of them going on to graduate school. Mm -hmm. So that that was encouraging. Yes. And. Um, I had a point, but I'll come back to it, I guess. But, but during the war, uh, 
that's when we say the war. My generation says yes. that's World War Two, not World War. No, World I knew World you War meant. II. I knew you meant World War Two. Right. <laughs> and there were victory gardens in the sewing projects and bandage wrappings for sterilization and sharing. And and it. But when the men came in 1947, it first started with a group of men in my opportunities to meet them on West Campus. We didn't have enough lab space. So laboratories, especially organic chemistry, was taught in a homemade lab on West Campus. Uh -huh. And so were the, some of the freshman labs taught out there. And buses transfer the students from, from the uh, East Campus this to the West Campus yeah. to West Campus. Mm -hmm. And Dr. Hertz, I remember, particularly yeah. associated with riding the bus. Yeah. out there. I remember changing the color of a blue suit of mine to pink because I had to carry a bottle of acid on the bus out there to teach my class. Oh my God. <laughs> a little late. It was very inconvenient to be split like that. No transportation. It was good. And then have to carry acid. Yeah. <laughs> <Ooh>. <laughs> We had, we had some unusual things to overcome. Dr. Uh, Governor, I haven't said the name of the dead too, was a very saving, I'll tell it before, was a very saving governor. And he just squeezed the funds out of the class of 43. Wow. Women. And so when the men came, here's this nice little puddle of money. And uh, it was neat because the uh, men came for courses like um, being a baker, baking bread. And, and they gave us in chemistry support. Real support for that. Mm -hmm. And I had a letter from one of those men, not very long ago. It's interesting because he said he struck it, of course. Um, that was the introduction of the men. And then the men began returning in large chambers. Mm -hmm. So Dr. Tiger of the University of Florida said, uh, we need some help, and I want to send you some men. I'm beginning to get my story mixed up now because <laughs> it's pretty pre Campbell, Dr. Campbell, and Campbell's early time. And the governor had, in '44 had, and from then on, had some money that he had squeezed out of the women's classes early. That wasn't fair. No, it wasn't fair. It wasn't fair. Now, um, when the men came, everything changed to say what happened. Well, the town, of course, was really shocked because here come people who are not talking your language and they're not following your little social rules. So we had to deal with the bus strike and with uh, people simply being courteous, Use, often very, very courteous, very attentive to international situations. But um, we did have to change our southern, southern way of living yes. in some cases. Of course. Yeah. 
naturally. Tarsa Campbell uh, brought a new situation. He had never been in a university. He never participated as a professor or officer anywhere in the pay. So um, he came in. We felt that he came with the idea of sweeping house. And he came with a vice president who also helped him. And so did Dr. Dipper in the department, in the department, chemistry department. But Dr. Dipper was uh, fairly understanding of the people who were here and tried to urge them into some other positions somewhere else. But few of us stuck around. And we didn't think he understood what teaching a whole school was going to be like. Mm -hmm. And sure enough, so he could get the new ripper snappers, whipper snappers, just out of graduate school with their PhD, ready to teach us all everything they knew. <laughs> yeah. um, that there was some work to be done at the beginning, but they had a responsibility not only to their research that they wanted to get underway right away naturally, and teaching the people who had been here. So uh, the, the students who were coming in, but we, we got all that smoothed out. That took a little while. I bet it did. Let, let me ask you something else. I know you you became, FSU gave you an honorary doctorate yeah. in chemistry, and you've had a number of other awards. Uh, you got the, some, an award from the Faculty Senate after you were president. You were president for two years of the Faculty Senate. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, I know you're admired by many people. Uh, I earned the I earned the uh, scholarship that Dr. Moore gave. Oh. He picked me up from the different sessions, and I I won that one year. I feel I earned that. Yeah, and you were the your when you were senior, you were the fat, the student president, mm -hmm. and. Uh, I think you were an associate chair of the department in chemistry. Well, I did a lot of the work. <laughs> I know you did. Because <laughs> you knew what needed to be done. I remember, because I came in 77, and, you know, we used to do things together. Um, and we still do, when we can. Um, but we went on the Wakulla River canoeing, do you remember? That was fun. Sure <laughs> and that snake was above us. <laughs> All the big moccasins? Yes, yeah. the water moccasins. Yeah, well, that was scary. He could have just dropped into our canoe. But I know you love the environment and you started a lectureship in chemistry. Mm -hmm. um, and that's still going on. That was such a good, wonderful idea. Just, just to close, would you tell me, you know, what the environment means to you? It, it's, it's always something I've been in my interest in my life. And of course, my husband was a chemist. Yes. My brother was a chemist. My son was a chemistry professor. What? I don't know. I just like nature. I like to think of what might be going on. I'm not the brightest people person, but I'm always, especially during my son, getting these questions and things we discuss. And 
stab it right at home. Oh, it's it's home again. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I don't know. my mother was a teacher, and that may very well have had influence on me, although. She knew nothing about chemistry that I can identify as um, passing it on to somebody else, mm -hmm. except little household things that you see at the East Rush and things. So I don't think I'm getting yet what you're saying. You know? Yeah, my family. Most of the people in my family have been agrarian. Mm -hmm. Said the good work. They've been interested in the soil and growth and living things. Like your father had the orange groves. Yeah. And and your husband. Uh, was had, had worked at the pesticide, well, the Department of Agriculture, mm -hmm. and and so you had those experiences, and then you came, when you came to Tallahassee, you loved the environment. Oh yeah, very different from Central Florida. It is. Yeah, and of course we've grown a lot of trees. Yes, as a family project. Mm-hmm. And uh, it earned some money as well as being real fun. Yes. Work. Kept you outside. And I walked through the other day of a room full of people about my age, which is 101. And I didn't see much of what I had thought I'd see. Uh -huh. I thought I'd see more bustling people. But for people who go to the gym every day, it, there's a, some fresh air or something. <laughs> you like that? I know you still like to go on the Wakulla River. Oh yes, that's a front yard. Yes. <laughs> so, I said, oh yeah. The doctor says, we don't find anything wrong with you. I go, ooh. <laughs> that's ooh. wonderful. <laughs> Look, my family, <laughs> I don't wear the stick around. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I think there's such a thing as living too long. Well. We all love you. Well, thank you. Thank you. For I always love all of you. So it's been a great family for me. Yes. Thank you for coming today and for having the interview. And thank you can look forward to other interviews in the future.